Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today I'm going to do a bit of a beginner's, well, I'm a beginner, let's put it that way. Um, so I'm going to start off going through the kit I've got, how I've built it up uh, for the pictures that I take for, you know, I'm trying a bit of everything because I don't know exactly what genre I want to go down, so and I enjoy it all. So I'm going to go through some kit, show you what I've got, tell you what it all costs, where I got it, and basically prove that for a beginner, certainly, you can get out, get some good pictures, um, and enjoy yourself, learn a lot with some cheap gear, and still do pretty well. Um, so we'll go through that in a bit. Roll the intro. So I uh, started in September um, taking pictures. Obviously, everyone's got phones. We've all took pictures for a long time. But I picked up my first DSLR in September, which was given to me by my mum. Um, it's a Canon 350D, 8 megapixel. Does all the usual bits and pieces that most of the cameras do, just obviously not to as good a quality. So the 8 megapixel is okay until you blow it up. Um, F numbers don't go as low or as high, obviously lens depending, but it's not... It's not got the capabilities of a more modern camera. It's got a tiny screen on the back, um, which makes looking at your pictures afterwards a bit of a nightmare. Uh, but you can learn the basics. It's as simple as that. All the usual ISO, um, F-stops, all that sort of stuff, um, which I could do videos on. But honestly, being a beginner, teaching beginners, probably not a lot of point. You can go and watch the same videos that I watched, which are all over the internet, that will tell you probably better than I can how all these bits and pieces work and what settings you want, you can Google it, etc, uh, etc. Et so I don't really need to go into that unless you want to see, see me do that, which could be funny. But uh, I'll just talk about how I get on as a beginner with what I've got, etc, etc. So this was free, but you can pick these up for about 30 quid, um, probably with the kit lens, which is this one, which is an 18 to 55. It's a standard kit lens, comes with nearly every single camera, certainly Canon in the kit, that is the lens you get. So you've got an 18mm focal length up to a 55mm focal length. It's pretty standard. Um, I'm not sure what the F numbers are on these, to be totally honest. I can't remember, but I think it's something like 3.5 up to about 32. Um, so you, you can still do some long exposure on it, etc. Um, I will show a few pictures of the basics a, a bit later on. So I learned basically with these two things. That's what I got given. That's what I said I'm going to go out and have a crack at. And I did. And I done well. But I wanted to just upgrade a bit. So there you go. You want to start off 50 quid. We'll get you rolling. I then moved on to another lens I don't have now. It was a zoom lens, completely manual off eBay. There are other sites you can buy off, obviously. Um, and it went from 400 to 800 on focal length uh, with an f-stop of 8. Uh, it was set, like I said, it was manual. You couldn't really play around on the camera too much with that one. It was all manual focus. It was good, except I had no range between the 55 and 400. So I was limited. It was great going out and getting birds in, in trees and whatever, but I was limited to any space in between. So I sold that lens um, for not a lot less than what I paid for it, which was a bargain. If you're watching, I didn't rip you off. It's still fine. Um, so I bought this one, which was a Tamron. Uh, 70 to 300, uh, it's got a good old little bit of extension on it, got the lens hood obviously, and a cap, um, it's all pretty decent stuff. This came like this, in very good condition, very good condition, second hand, again off eBay, for 70 quid. Um, automatic focus, manual focus if you need it, it does macro, you can click it up into a macro mode so it'll extend right out. And then you can click into macro and go even further. So you can get right into the uh, to your flowers and your insects and whatever. It's not as good as a macro lens, but for 70 quid, it's got me that range now from the 55, or well, from the 70 up to the 300, which again, then you can crop. So I got this and I was getting on well with that. And it is probably my go-to lens for most of the time I'm out. It's as simple as that. Um, but I needed a bit more with the quality because I'm trying to blow up 8 megapixel which wasn't blowing up very well 
so then I was losing quality on the picture, certainly a distance. So I then searched the internet on the old uh, famous social media site, Facebook. Again, there are other social media sites. And I ended up getting this one, which is very similar in look and size and all sorts. Now this is the 500D. So it's a few models up from the 350. Not sure massively how old it is, probably a good five years, maybe more. Um, it hasn't took that many shots, only had 8,000 on the shutter, which is uh, pretty good if you ask me. They're, they're up to about 100,000, I think they're warranting for. Um, screen on the back, a lot bigger. So I can see a lot more. There's a lot more information on the back of this screen as well. I can, it, it all comes up digital. I can see all the information I need to see, and you can see a few bits through the viewfinder. Um, Again, this is 15.1 megapixel, I believe. Um, so nearly twice as good as the 350D. So it's giving me more scope to go out and get better pictures. Um, clarity is slightly better. I'm still learning it, admittedly. Um, every time I take a shot, I'll have a look at it. I'll change the settings, play around a bit, a bit more, shutter speed, ISO, and your aperture. Again, go online, Google these if you want to learn it, because you can learn everything on YouTube, like I did. Um, but that is a good camera. Again, for a beginner, 50 quid I paid. Um, they're about 70 to 100 on eBay, um, so I wasn't expecting it to turn up. Quite frankly, I thought I was probably being ripped off when I saw it online for 45 quid, and I said, can you post it for 50 quid? Dude's like, yep, okay, we'll see what turns up. And it's immaculate, it works, very happy. So then to up my game a bit more, I got another lens. This is a 50 mm prime lens. It is a, are you ready for this one? Uh, nope, it's one of them. A Yo Yong, Yong now, Yong now. Basically, it's a Chinese ripoff of Canon's prime lens because to my knowledge, Canon only make one lens in China. That's this one. Well, it's the proper one of this one. So this is the ripoff one and I've watched reviews before I bought it and there's not a great deal in comparison, certainly to a beginner, to someone who's on a budget, this is a good lens. Again, I'll pop a few pictures on at the end, I'll show you the different lenses and what they're capable of. Um, but like I said, it's a prime lens, so you've got no focal length, it's set at 50, um, but you can go down to 1.8 on the aperture. So you get a lot of blur in the background, you get a lot of bokeh in your, in your shots if you want to, if you're taking some night, some light photography, stuff like that, you can uh, really get some bokeh pop out on that. So, excellent lens, I've only had it Four days now, um, love it. Really, it's it's up the game a bit. It's given me a new direction to have a crack at. I've done a photo shoot actually um, for a lovely couple just last week, a couple of days ago, and I took this. I took all my lenses, obviously, but I tried most with that lens, and really impressed. Really got some really nice shots. Really happy with how they come out. And again, this is off eBay, thirty six quid, thirty six pound for a prime lens. With a nice bit of glass inside it, um, no complaints. It's averagely speed on on the uh, on the focusing. What do you expect? It's thirty six quid, but the pictures are fun. Now to go on top of that, as far as kit for me as a beginner, I want to get a bit of everything to practice everything to give me as many options as I want. Should I want to go and try weddings, wildlife, portrait, etc., etc. So I then got a top flash. They've got another name, but for the life of me, I can't think what it's called. External flash, we'll call it. Uh, basically, as you can probably figure out, screws into the top of your camera like so. You can change where it points. You've got a little uh, thing in there to reflect the card off, so you can bring the light back down onto the person instead of pointing it direct into their face. Um, it's got various different functions on the back. You can change uh, how bright you want it to be. Um, what speed you want it to come up with your shutter speed, and obviously this camera, no, not this camera, the better camera of the two. I can adjust in the menu as well when I want the shutter, whether I want the flash to go off on the first curtain or the second curtain. Um, again, if this is all gibberish, was to me, just go and YouTube it all, and you'll learn it all. Um, I then got this little photo fo R little box, okay? which just slips, I probably won't be able to get it on there, but we'll have a go. No, I don't have to undo it all. Anyway, that clips on top of your uh, on top of your flash here, like so, and it just blows the light out a bit more, dims it down slightly, and stops it being so like in your face, stops your subject squinting and all sorts. So um, again, these are just eBay, Amazon, stuff like that. Um, cheap, very cheap, but 
it just you know I'm not going to go and buy some downgrade big box or some big umbrella for Porsche. I, I, I didn't have that budget. A um, couple of other little bits that I would say I know it's rabbiting on, but bear with. Um, filters. These are all cool. I like them. Just got various different ND filters. You can get different ND stops from two up to God knows what, 400, something like that. Um, again, these to screw onto the end of your lenses, like so. And then suddenly you have a darker filter on your lens. You can get different color filters to make sunsets, different colors, etc., etc. I'll probably get corrected on a lot of what I'm saying, but that's how I use it, and it's doing all right. Uh, various ones on there. I've also got a couple of just clear protector ones, uh, UV ones they're called, just to protect your lenses, stuff like that. If you're doing a bit of traveling, if you're in your bags, you can screw those into your, into your lenses, stops a bit of light flare, and it uh, protects your lens at the same time, which is not a bad idea. That is most of the kit. There's two more things. A magic mystical ball. Okay. And this little bit of kit here. It's called a lens ball, weighs about 35 kilos, I think. It doesn't, but it's heavy. It's a solid glass ball, um, and you can have some fun with it. Put it up again, you know, sort of just quite close to your lens, and basically it will turn all your images upside down. You can then flip the image so the background's upside down, etc. Um, it's just a bit of fun. There yeah, again, pretty cheap. You know what I mean? Just, just to give me something else to play with, another little go. And then you get these. Now, macro lenses are expensive. If you want to do the close-up stuff of your insects and your flowers and whatnot, macro lenses are pricey. So you can get these lens extenders, I believe they're called, lens tubes, something like that. They come in different sizes, 13mm, 21mm and 31mm, like so. Or you can put them all together, so you put those on, like a quick demonstration. That goes on the end of your lens, like so. That then goes into, he says, your camera, which now puts your lens closer to what you were taking a picture of, and you can get some damn close pictures. Again, put a couple on at the end. I'll try and mark up what lenses were what on the, uh, on the pictures, so you can see what you can achieve with these, and you can probably even do a better job than what I'm doing. Um, again, just a beginner, only been doing it a few months, so just uh, having a bit of fun with it. But I recommend it if anyone is interested in photography. These bits, I would say, are the base for having a good time taking pictures and experimenting. And I'd say we've probably got less than 200 quid on the table, um, which is a bargain. Bear in mind there are cameras that cost, obviously, thousands of pounds. Uh, I am saving up for a new mirrorless, um, which hopefully I'll get this summer. Um, that is, you know, I'm doing better at the photography. I've got a little bit of work coming in, so I'm saving that towards better gear so I can do better work, which is obvious. But um, that's the base and a camera bag, uh, which is pretty standard. Again, oh, I'm as cheap as you like or as expensive as you like. They've got all your various compartments in, and you can carry it all around. And a tripod, I can't show you that because my camera's on it. Um, but anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope you've learned something uh again youtube for better for better stuff i'm just putting out there that a beginner can go out have some fun with some decent gear go second hand and enjoy it and make the most of the game so um thanks for watching like and subscribe please share it if you enjoy it and we will see you again in a month or so i'm going to try and do it a little bit sooner so maybe a couple of weeks we'll, we'll do another one We'll get out and about when the weather picks up because at the moment it's bloody miserable. So um, anyway, all the best. Peace out, guys. Thank you. I keep a photograph in which we were in love caught in your eyes waiting for the sunrise. Somebody told me that it's over oh.